Hi, hello. This is Daydream Austin. Welcome to another episode of My Orisha Journey. How are you? Hey, <laughs> how's it going? I just thought of something and I wanted to share it with you. So anybody who's part of, you know, one of the African spiritual traditions, such as um, Orisha tradition, Ifa, you know, whatever you call it, you know, one of the major components of this tradition is Ebo, which is sacrifice or offering, right? So when I first came into this tradition, let me tell you, Ebo was like magic to me. Finally, I would have some evidence that the energy I was putting out, you know, would be... Um, that there would be some reciprocity and I would get it back. You know, so I'm not just praying and kind of hoping and, and hoping and waiting, but, you know, I'm doing something and I'm getting a result. Like I'm seeing a return on my efforts. So I thought at Bo, you know, sacrifice and offering was the most wonderful thing ever. I'm like, oh, finally, you know, I'll have some evidence because I have a, a very scientific and, you know, intellectual mind and I love to see evidence that helps me to believe in things so I thought I had finally found it right oh I got it finally you know I'm not just praying and waiting but I'm praying I'm taking an action an action and then I'm watching the return happen or come back but you know I was a little too gung-ho and a little too excited and I went in thinking that as soon as I, I did a ebo I would see a return and let me tell you, I have found out that that is not the case. You can wait a good amount of time to see the result, you know, to see the uh, the end result of an ebo. Um, I've heard tale of a woman who waited about two years to see the results of an ebo. So it's like, because of, I think, our fast food mentality of everything that we're so used to here... I came into this thinking, oh, if I give, then I receive. And then I'm thinking that that would happen so quickly. And it doesn't happen that quickly all the time. You know, and I, I didn't know that at first. I was just like, you know, I went in excited and thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I've heard, I heard stories about people having their cancers cured. And I'm like, oh, well, if people can have their cancers cured, then I most certainly can, you know, do Ebo for work or for a place to live and, and all of these things. But it dawned on me as I've, you know, become, I guess, more aware of our own stuff. You know, like I'm thinking, if you had a hard time manifesting, you know, what's in your heart, what's inside of you before you got to this tradition and before you began to go to Ifa and Arumila, and begin to go to your Orisha and your Egungun. Well, guess what? If you already had a hard time, you're going to still struggle a bit. Like, this is something that you're going to work up to because, you know, I don't think it comes naturally for everyone. Like, if you have so much inside of you, um, so many false messages and notions and perspectives, right, that you don't deserve these things, that you suffer from lack and you've always suffered from lack and that's the only vibration you know, why would you get anything else? You know, why would you? So, it, you know, it began to come to me. It's just like, wow, this doesn't happen overnight. This is a process. So all of that junk you have inside of you, all of this nonsense you've been conditioned with from a child as somebody growing up in the Western war world, that has to be taken out. Like, you have to get rid of that before you can manifest anything. All right? So we look at the Orisha, you know, and, and sometimes even our Gungun as these magic workers. But these are energies within you. So if they're within you, there's something that needs to happen within you before you can manifest their blessings. They say that you cannot be blessed without the blessing of your Ori. All right? So if my Ori, if I'm asking my Orisha to um, change, you know, instantly reverse my fortune. You know, make sure I'm good. Make sure I have the money I need and, and you know, a place to stay and all of these things. My Orisha has to go to my Ori for the permission. And now my Ori is with me and my Ori has been with me for years while I've built up this, this gook, 
you know, on this wall and all of this heaviness that I've, I've picked up and kind of perpetuated over time, these false notions of myself in the world. Right. So if I have these false notions of myself in the world that I've gathered over time and just kept them going now, I actually have to break through that before I can get to the blessings of my Orisha, before my Ori will allow the blessings of my Orisha. And this is something that it took me years to figure out. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, I'm going, I'm going to the Orisha and I'm praying for all of these things. But the truth of the matter is the Orisha are in me. The Egungun are in me. My Ori is me and my Ori is with me all the time. My Ori is that is the ultimate help, is the ultimate support. So I'm going to all, all, all of these, these things, right? But they're all within me. So the change, whatever that needs to change, whatever that needs to snap to, whatever light needs to turn on so that I can manifest, my destiny is here, right? And it starts with us and the personal work we do on um, unconditioning ourselves, you know, deconditioning, removing all of the sludge that we've picked up over time and perpetuated. So I just wanted to come to you and share that. You know, it's real. Ebo is real. The results are real because I've had, you know, some instances where I've seen like a, a return and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, but there's some other things that I haven't seen. And I know that the reason I haven't seen them is because of the ways I think about myself in the world. You know, my inner vision has been tainted in this time and space. We live in a a pretty tricky time and space in terms of the the images and the per perceptions that you know we have so we have to be very careful and that's the work that you do in order to manifest your destiny right we can go and we can pray all we want but there's something that needs to happen in here in order for us to manifest our destiny so let's get to work thank you for listening it's daydream austin please subscri subscribe and you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Daydream Austin, Facebook, Daydream Austin. And, you know, it's good talking to you. I just wanted to share that with you because I know it's something that I've been working on and it may support one of you. Have a great day. Bye.